Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Spydeco Chaparral Sun and the Moon Edition. Um, first off, though, I want to thank Spydeco very much for sending this guy along. This guy was provided to me directly from the manufacturer. I saw one of these guys, I think it played 2019, and thought, oh, that's attractive. I should pick one of these guys up, and sure enough, when they released, I said, hey, can I take a look? Um, because I was curious how it was going to turn out the final production version. I was going to see, you know, how it actually ended up carrying, etc. But um, Spydeco set this along. As always, they know I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, might be junk, but they still did send it along. Nonetheless, we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature of my review. Next thing, size comparison. Um, this is a, uh, well, it's about the size of a Spydeco Chaparral, actually. If I uh, go ahead and do that comparison, yeah, we can see here this is a very Chaparral-esque sort of knife, which would make a good deal of sense, right? Here it is against the Spydeco PM2, or Paramilitary 2, and what we see here is it is considerably smaller. Here it is against the Spydeco Delica. It is considerably smaller. Um, not even as much in the blade length. Uh, we can see that, like the other chaparrals, the blade length actually is relatively similar. It's just the handle is uh, remarkably smaller. And then here it is against the Ontario Rat number two. So, again, it's a reasonably small little knife there. Um, and then finally, I have done a bunch of reviews of the Spydeco chaparral before, right? Um, I've talked about the regular chaparral, the titanium chaparral. I've talked about the chaparral lightweight here, which is one of my very favorite pocket knives and one of the ones I recommend most regularly. So, if you're looking for kind of a full rundown on the Chaparral as a model, I encourage you, maybe check out the Chaparral Lightweight Review. That's kind of my most recent one and really co covers my feelings on it. Um, but So I'm going to focus instead on the sun and the moon aspect of it. Uh, focus on this particular model, and as a result, this is going to be a quick review where I'll talk about what I like, what I don't like so much, and we'll take it, on, uh, take it from there. So let's go into the good stuff. Um, to start with, uh, the Chaparral is a great knife. I mean, look, the Spydeco Chaparral, I, I, I said this already, but it is a gem. And I, I, I don't feel like this is any exception. This is also going to be a gem because it's a great design and it's just done with a different aesthetic spin. But the, the Chaparral is a knife that is remarkably skinny. It's remarkably slicey. It carries very, very well, very small in the pocket. I mean, fold it up. This guy is reasonably tiny. I mean, even compared to the Delica, this guy looks pretty small. And it just, it's a very unassuming sort of piece. I just like the Chaparral a lot. It's a knife that I recommend over and over and over again to people. And aside from the lock bar being a little bit thin here as a result of the blade stock being a little bit thin here, which is a beautiful thing, this is just a great piece. And so the best thing this has going for it is the fact that it's based on one of the better knives Spydeco makes. That Right? That's a good thing. Um, but talking about the knife itself, um, this is a, a great knife if you are interested in kind of what the, the inlaid work represents. I mean, to start with, if you're a fan of Japan, well, you got the flag right there on the backside there. They were going to do one for Switzerland, but uh, they decided, although that would be a big plus... Okay, anyways, I digress. Um, but you've got the, uh, the, the the red on white in the back here, the black on, or the, the mother of pearl on black in the middle here. And actually, let me zoom in a little bit on that, because that brings us to the next point, which is that the inlay work on this is quite nice. And this is actually, I mean, this sure looks like mother of pearl, right? I, I can't guarantee you that it's not some, but it's advertised as mother of pearl, and it sure looks like it. I mean, in fact, I'll put some, put some light on the subject here from a different flashlight off camera here, and you'll see a little bit more the, the chatoyance of it, the fact that, it, that the light really plays with it quite effectively. And so I'm a big fan of this Mother of Pearl here. It looks just really, really good. And the other thing to note is that the inlay work here is excellent. Um, if we look at this, there aren't gaps here. If I run my fingernail across this, I can tell when I move from the G10 to the... That is just because of the change in texture. But there aren't any gaps. There aren't any ridges or anything like that. Um, and the same can be said on the back here. I, I believe that these are two different pieces of G10 here, that this is an inlay rather than just being dyed or a sheet of G10 made with a red rod going through it, um, because the, the orientation of the G10 sort of lines is different. As you can see right there, there's a little bit of difference there, but the inlay work here is, again, excellent. This looks like it was, you know, a, a part of the same handle there. And so I very much appreciate the fact that they didn't screw up the inlay work, and that could have been very easy for them to do. Um, and the Mother of Pearl, like I said, also looks very good. It's just, it's a material that you don't see as often in the production knife world, um, but looks quite attractive and lends it something a little bit above and beyond. If this were just, for instance, this G10 
uh, the, the white of G10 in the middle there, I mean, it would look good, but this adds a little bit of something. And as a result, this is a knife that looks a lot better in person than it does in pictures. Um, it, it, That's kind of a weird thing to say, but it 100% is true. You look at it in the catalog and it's like, okay, yeah, it's black on one side, it's white on the other side, there's a dot, okay, uh, fine. But then with the mother of pearl in there, with the smoothness of the inlays and the reflectiveness, I, I, this looks a lot nicer in person. Next thing, um, this winds up feeling, as a result of all that, this winds up feeling a lot classier than some of the other Chaparral variants out there. I mean, what we've got at the moment, although there's been like the Rafia Noble, there have been the Step Titanium versions, which I think are now discontinued, but the most common one these days is either the Carbon Fiber Original one, which is a Carbon Fiber that is sort of okay. It's not like a high-end, fancy Carbon Fiber with beautiful marbling or even, you know, all that much optics to it. Or there's the uh, FRN Chaparral here, which is uh, the, the not really trying to be super fancy. Uh, let's be real here, but I, either way, the um, this really ends up feeling classy. This ends up feeling like a fancy knife, a fancy folder. This belongs in a suit pocket or something like that. This belongs in, in a nice dress or something. I don't know. Um, th this could be an absolutely great knife for a classy sort of carry. Um, and I, I think it just is right now of all of the chaperones, probably the one that is closest to that ideal. And it opens this knife up, especially this guy, which is a little bit more, uh, you know, meant for the job site. It opens this up to a whole new level, even beyond what the carbon fiber originally did. Because let's be real here, carbon fiber is almost getting a little played out in the knife community too, so this glass is the join up a little bit. Next thing, this is actually well priced. I expected this guy, you know, I make a point not to learn prices until I uh, am ready to sit down and film my review. I had this guy around 200 bucks. Now to be fair, uh, to be clear, the, uh, the, 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 the FRN version here is 95 bucks. The uh, carbon fiber one is uh, 140 bucks. I figured this was coming in around 200, just figuring the mother of pearl, etc. But they actually landed this guy at 160, which I'm not going to sit here and tell you 160 bucks is a knife. Oh, bargain! No, absolutely not. But at the same time. They only went 20 bucks more than the basic carbon fiber one, and it feels way more than 20 bucks uh, nicer than this. Um, and so uh, it is actually a pretty reasonable price for the, the level of finishing that you're getting. And by the way, it's worth noting, this is coming from Spyderco's Taichung Taiwan factory, which arguably may be competing with Golden these days, um, but is uh, probably Spyderco's best fit and finish uh, factory at the moment. So this just feels really great, uh, even for that price. And then finally, we all know the real reason for purchasing a brand new pocket knife in 2020. Um, and that is to get Instagram likes, right? And this knife is absolutely perfect for that because picture this everybody knows the very best day for instagram uh, likes in the knife community is when you get a brand new knife so you can post this up on instagram you can take a fancy picture of it you know with your with your fancy wristwatch be like hey okay no, no big deal but i just got a new knife and then the very next day you flip it over you take it you put it next to a pen you're like oh, second new knife day in a row wow aren't i classy it's perfect for that so you get two free instagram new knife day posts especially if you flop the, uh, the clip around, uh, people are never going to pick up on that. So you get two new Knife Day posts out of one knife. This is true innovation in the sphere. It is definitely something that I, I, I appreciate as somebody who flexes professionally on social media. Yeah, that, that, that's a joy. So um, to me, at least that's what's good here is that you get twice as many Instagram likes with the flip-flop design here. You get only 20 bucks more than the basic carbon fiber to get into this. It feels classier than any other Chaparral variant yet, maybe accepting the tie, but that's a little more jewelry-ish. Um, the, the, the inlay work as well as the Mother of Pearl are really great. It is perfect for your fans of Japan. And uh, even though it's made in Taiwan interesting. And then the chaparral just remains a stellar knife to start with. Um, on the bad side, a couple of little things. Um, the white on this guy is actually what's facing out towards the world when this is in your pocket. And this is fine, but if you're wearing slacks or something like that, it would be much easier to have this sticking up above your pocket than to have this. I get it, though. They want to put the mother of pearl on the show side, right? And for most right-handed people, this is going to be the show side. By the way, it's a fully ambidextrous knife. In case you hadn't noticed with the back lock, the, the, but nonetheless, for a lot of people, they're going to want the right side to be the show side, and so they put the Mother of Pearl there. I get it, but yeah, that's definitely a little bit less subtle than that. Next thing, the texturing on the G10 can be a little weird at some angles. Like I mentioned, if we kind of take a look at this, G10 has a natural texture to it, even with a nice 
polish on it, and it does. But it has this kind of grid pattern to it naturally, which makes it look a little bit less impressive than, say, some of the really nice polished micatas, etc. Not the end of the world, but it's it's not it is not a high end micata, right? There were there were other finishes that are a little bit more attractive than this guy. Although the polished G10 does definitely look nice. Next thing, especially on the black side, the screws stick out like a sore thumb here, and there is a fair amount of hardware with the, um, uh, especially with the clip screw in the back there. You know, I tend to prefer disassemblable knives, but this is one of those cases where it might have looked a little bit more attractive pinned with all the hardware hidden. I'm not making that suggestion. Spyderco, please, 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 don't uh, don't quote me on this. But still, um, I, I, there is a lot of hardware on the back here. Next thing, the uh, wire clip on this guy makes a little less aesthetic sense on this than it does, for instance, on your uh, lightweight here. Um, It's not a big deal, but this is definitely something where I can see somebody getting a lot of joy out of an aftermarket clip or something like that. You know, high polish, a tight clip or something like that and put it on here and it goes in there. I can see that looking really sharp on this. So it's a good clip um, and functionally it's a great clip but at the same time I can see some people preferring a, a different option there. And then finally um, this guy is a little bit heavier than the lightweight one. Um, I mean a very little bit heavier. This is a oh where is my scale? Here it is. Uh, the, the, the lightweight uh, chaparral is coming in here at, uh, I'm sorry, the FRN one is coming in at 2.08 ounces. This guy is coming in here at uh, 2.31. Yeah, that's that's not a whole heck of a lot there, right? Um, and compared to the carbon fiber, it, 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 yeah, it's it's not a particularly heavy knife. Um, it's still coming in under an ounce an inch, but still, um, it's a little heavier. So to me, that's what's bad here. It's a little heavier. The wire, uh, wire clip doesn't look quite as beautiful here. The screws are sticking out a little bit, The uh, and I mean visually, not that they're, although actually they're not 100% flush, but they're also rounded objects, right? Um, the G10 texturing can be a little bit obvious and weird at some angles. And then finally, the uh, white is facing out towards the world, making it disappear in the pocket a little bit less. Final conclusions, look, the chaparral is a gem. Every iteration of it, more or less, has been it's pretty damn good, right? Um, and so this is something that I, I really recommend on a regular basis, and it's one of the better production knives going out there these days, especially if you want something super thin, slicey, and available. This knife here, I don't even have to tell you, is a purely aesthetic update. There is zero reason, if you own one of these guys and you love this and you don't need the aesthetic change, this is no different. These are literally the same knife, except this one's wearing a fancy, I'm sorry, this one's wearing a fancy pair of pants, right? Uh, this is, there is no functional distinction here. This is all about style, but it is pretty damn stylish with a nice inlay work, with a nice contrast, with a relatively unique design. You know, I don't know who exactly came up with this idea because frankly, they could have done this in just the black uh, G10 with the polish and whatnot, and it would have been pretty cool too, but doing the flip-flop on there, that's neat. I mean, it's it's a cool idea. And I, I've seen a lot lot of people, even just on Instagram posting this, were like, oh, yes, I want that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so that's that's pretty excellent. So I can see a lot of folks really liking it, especially given the disadvantages of going this way aren't that big. The price gap isn't all that huge because, look, it's not a cheap knife, but they've done a nice job of constraining the price. It's not something that is absurdly more expensive than the base model. If we consider the carbon fiber to be the base model, which historically it is, although this these days has kind of taken that point. Um, but this is not really that much pricier than that and so it really it makes it pretty easy for somebody to say yeah I like this I like the chaparral but I want something a little fancier still and this is doable had they done this in some fancy you know crazy micata or something like that maybe it would have been pricier and they, they, they would have priced themselves out of the market but they've done a pretty good job making this a viable option um it's not as huge jump and I think a lot of folks are going to take this jump especially people who love the lightweight and think to themselves well maybe I want something classy this gives them an option to do it and so ultimately um this is a great knife. It's a, it's a gem, predictably, and it all comes down to style. If you're not loving the chaparral, well, don't buy a chaparral. That's that's the kind of hard-hitting advice you come to the Nick Shabazz channel for. But more importantly, if you don't love the style, don't buy the knife. Um, this is what you are paying for. You are getting this cool little style here. You're getting that approach. Um, and so if you're not a fan of that, don't bother. Uh, don't bother, that is. But if you love the look, you will no doubt be over the moon and over the sun with this little guy right here. So there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.